Hello, this is Jesse Harris with Howdy Universe, and today we're going to look at an exercise that is <coughs> calculating the change that you would get. So you go to a store and you say, oh, your change is going to be 43 cents or 78 cents or $3.48. How many quarters? How many dimes? How many nickels? How many pennies? And we can use code to calculate that. So I've went ahead and put together a simple example in Python. And this is sort of a rudimentary uh, first draft of something that you could see in different programming languages. So what we've got is a starting amount, <coughs> 43. Go with 43 cents. It's pretty good because it gives us coverage for uh, quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies. And it's not too complex. You know, it's not some crazy high number. And uh, we all know that uh, 43 cents, you're going to get one quarter. That's 25 cents. A dime that makes 35 a nickel is 40 and three pennies so it gives us a chance to test you know one of each one of the larger coins and three of the penny just to make sure everything looks good what we've got our logic lead out here is okay we're going to have a starting amount assign the starting amount to a remaining amount so sort of our uh, loop variable something to keep track of our current progress while it is greater than zero this remaining amount that we have to process we're going to go through this logic we've got one giant if block with um, four different paths here. So if it's greater than 25 cents, we're going to take 25 cents off the total, print a quarter, if it's 10 cents, a dime, 5 cents, a nickel, 1 cent, a penny. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and run this. And we'll see, okay, we've got a quarter, a dime, a nickel, a penny, a penny, a penny. This all looks good. Um, and, and, and you could sort of get to this, you know, you could start with doing a penny in small amounts and work your way up to nickel and a dime and a quarter. And we could expand this out to half dollars and one dollars and five dollars and two dollars and twenties and up to a hundred dollar bills. It, it could go as high as we want. You could do it with different currencies. And really, uh, you can grow it. But it's not very, um, it's kind of brittle. And so what I want to do is take this and do something a little different. So what I want to do is create a function that, I'll, that sort of encapsulates this logic. So it doesn't really matter what we name it. We can rename it later. But if we're going to count a coin, we're going to want to know what's the name of the coin. In this case, we will do quarter. And we'll need to know the value of the coin. And what we want to do is num coins equals zero. So how many quarters do we need while? Oh, the other thing we need to pass in is the amount. So that should probably be first, uh, our amount. I could put it at the end. It doesn't really matter. While amount. greater than, and we're not going to write quarter, we're going to write coin name, coin value, while amount is greater than coin value. So if we have more value than we have coins, then we are going to coins plus equals one amount minus equals value. Print num coins to look prettier we'll add that percent s you know one quarter two quarters so what we're saying is okay we as far as we know there's zero coins 
if you have more value than their more amounts than their coin value, we're going to take one coin out, one of these coins out. We're going to subtract that coin value from the amount, and then we're going to keep going. What we're going to return at the end is our amount. So we're going to print out how many coins we should give back, and then we're going to return the amount with the you know uh, coin value. This is this type here, coin value. Once we have this method here, I'm sorry, this function here, we can do something like this. We can say starting amount, say coin count, quarter. to save, control should be execute, and notice it says we'll get one quarters. Now what if we put in penny? What if we want to see how many pennies we get? Now obviously the plural for penny will be a little different, but control save, control shift E. So maybe that's not the right way to say it, but it says okay 42 pennies and uh, 40, well something seems to be right here. We started with 43, yet it says we're only going to do 42 pennies. So how about while amount greater than or equal to coin value? Oops. Greater than or equal to. Now we have 43 pennies. This is important to to test, you know, what you have going on here. So, we say 43 pennies. What we really want to say is temp amount equals equals starting amount. equals coin count quarter point temp amount one quarters and we have 18 cents left we see this here so what we can do is we can run through this entire stack Of logic that we have up here. So we go to 10 cents, we go to 5 cents, penny, quarter, nickel, dime. We'll see there's a problem. One quarter, four dimes, eight nickels. What's going on? Well, what we need to do temp amount. So we get our temp amount which is going to be 43 because we don't want to modify our starting amount. Temp amount in, temp amount out. Temp amount in, temp amount out. Temp amount in, temp amount out. Control S, Control Shift D. We get one quarter, one dimes, one nickels, three pennies. We can take our old logic out. We can adjust this as well. So 78 cents, we should get three quarters, zero dimes, zero nickels. You know, we, and we can adjust this possibly to say, okay, well, if the coin, if the number of uh, coins is zero down here, maybe we don't print anything. And there's, there's definitely different tweaks you can do, but I find that this is more maintainable, this, this sort of coin counting logic. You know, we could put special rules in here or those sort of things. We could even... You know, if, if we wanted to say, okay, well, we want to do half dollars uh, for this scenario and not half dollars, or maybe, um, you know, we don't give away pennies, we can take these lines out, add different lines. Um, it's, it's definitely less brittle than going with the, you know, if, else, elif, elif, elif statement. So definitely I would recommend looking at first getting your logic, something that works. Then how can I turn this into something more 
fluid, something more controllable, you know, using functions or methods or objects. Um, but definitely get a working model first. And that's how you would want to tackle a problem like how to calculate the change that comes back. That's all from How to Universe. Have a great day.